Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side. We welcome your calls, 844-236-6010. That's 844 Two three six sixty ten. If you have comment or success story you'd like to share, questions about ingredients or formulations, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order your longevity products right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites. Or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information. All right, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We have been talking about The Secret Life of Fat. That's the title of a very interesting book. We're not talking about the book, but we've been talking about the mysterious nature of fats. This book, The Secret Life of Fat, The Science Behind the Body's Least Understood Organ and What It Means for You is a really good read if you're, if you're fascinated by fat. Sylvia Terra, PhD, is lots of, really, lots of very interesting information about the secret nature of fat. By secret meaning we don't really think about uh, all, the th all the things fat does for us. The average person, I bet, thinks just th when we think of fat, we just think of energy. Or we think of our guts or our butts or our hips. We think of the fat on our bodies. But despite fat's somewhat, I guess you could say bad reputation, it has a bad reputation. People more often want to lose fat than gain fat, at least, if that means it's, it's negatively, uh, has, uh, there's a negative perception that most of us have about fat. Despite that, it's actually associated with longevity. Fat is associated with fertility. Fat is associated with intelligence. Fat is associated with stronger bones. And of course, fat is also associated with energy. There are a, a lot of good things that fat does for us. It's extremely important stuff. It's a storage form for sugar as energy, but it acts to it has a lot of biochemical effects on the body. And so you might, from one point of view, or from one perspective, it's like uh, gasoline reserves. Sugar is like gasoline and fat is like gasoline reserves. So from one perspective, fat is our reserves of energy. But fat is so, so, so much more. Probably the most important role or the most important uh, health-relevant role for fat is when it comes to inflammation. Inflammatory diseases are associated with accumulations in fat. Or more technically, it's actually not fat. I should be more specific here. It's fat cells. A fat cell is like a bubble that holds fat. When we talk about fat, when you hear the word fat, we're talking about substances that are a substance that has varying consistencies, liquid, semi-solid, solid. But when we talk about the activities of fat and the roles of fat, we're not talking about the fat itself. We're talking about the fat cell. The fat cell is one of the most metabolically active cells in the body and not just for energy. It's the fat cell 
that is making inflammatory chemicals. It's the fat cell that's making uh, chemicals that help us balance our blood sugar. It's the fat cell that makes our bones stronger. It's the fat cells that are uh, producing substances, uh, hormones that uh, increase fertility or that have a role to play in fertility. It's the fat cells that are active and the fat cells are activated by fat. The fat cells together form a fat gland. This is something that we've only known about in the last maybe 20 years or so, not even probably. The fat collectively, all the fat cells, I should say, collectively are a gland, like your thyroid gland, or like your adrenal gland, or like your testes. The definition of a gland is a, is a, a structure that makes hormones. And fat, even though the cells are spread out all over the body, is basically a structure that makes hormones. It's like a, it's like a structure that's dispersed throughout the body. That's an interesting thing about the body. There are these structures that we don't think of as structures because they're spread out. When we think of a structure like a gland, we think of like a localized unit. But there are structures in the body, <clears throat> excuse me, that function as an organ that they're spread out. Fat is like that. The immune system, by the way, is like that. The immune system is almost like an organ, and it's just spread out everywhere in the body. We've got to start thinking that way, and then it will make sense that when one part of the body is affected, or is activated, the entire body is, uh, is affected. So when a small part of the body is activated, the entire body is affected because it's kind of like an organ that's spread out. The immune system is an organ that's spread out. So if, you gotta, if, if your immune system is messed up in your gut, it's going to show up on your skin. But because we don't think of this immune system as being spread out all over the body, we never make that connection. Although probably if you've been listening to this program, you made that connection because we make it every day here. The relationship between the immune system in the digestive tract and the immune system in the skin or the immune system everywhere. Once the immune system is activated in one place, part of the body, it's activated everywhere because it's like an organ. When fat makes inflammatory chemicals, it makes inflammatory chemicals that are going to affect the entire system. Because it's like an organ that's spread out from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. So anyway, fat cells play a major, major role in the inflammatory process, and this is one of the, and cancer also, by the way. Cancer is largely a fat issue. I'm not going to get into that right now because that's such a deep subject, but we definitely will be talking about it. Cancer is largely an issue of fat and lipids. And this is why losing weight, or losing fat, I should say, shrinking your fat cells, your fat cells, are, you always have the same amount of fat cells, but your fat cells are enlarging. So shrinking your fat cells, increasing fat burning is so important if you're dealing with an inflammatory disease or if you want to prevent cancer. It's no accident that the most, uh, most common cancers are cancers of the f that involve the fatty system of the body. Breast cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, all the biggies, all the ones that, we, the ones that are the most, uh, the most common. Fat cells also make anti-inflammatory chemicals. Fat cells uh, are, are, you can consider fat cells to be, I don't want to say the most, but certainly one of the most active and, and health relevant uh, cells in the body. And they're activated by fat. And where does that fat come from? It comes from food, especially carbs, as in sugar, processed foods and grains. Sugar processed foods and grains are the major ways we, our fat cells get big. You can also throw in fat, of course, but unless you have, it's interesting because unless you have uh, insulin present, fat is not really going to get stored as effectively. That means you've got to have carbs around. And by the way, this is especially a problem, this whole issue of, of uh, uh, carbs and processed foods and sugar increasing fat. It's especially a problem for vegans and vegetarians. I was just at a vegan convention yesterday. Almost all the vegan food I saw at this convention was highly processed grains and oils that are heated and manipulated. Really bad, bad foods. I'm not talking about vegetables. Vegetables, now that's obviously, most of our calories should come from vegetables in my opinion. So vegetables, you, we need lots and lots of vegetables. But interestingly and ironically, the foods that vegans are subsisting on are highly processed fats and very carbohydrate rich. And it's not there. There's a very poor case that could be made for the health of these things. Almost all the food I saw at this vegan convention in uh, Broomfield, Colorado yesterday were foods that you do not want to eat from a health perspective. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are 
are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, our true skin health products, comment or success story, 844-236-6010 is our number. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products. Also to join the Brightside Ben team. Or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Okay, so we're talking about the mysterious secret nature of fats. Fats and carbs together, that's really where the problem comes in. We eat fats and carbs together because insulin is involved in how a cells, whether they're fat cells or any other cells for that matter, get energy or, or store energy and store nutrients. Insulin is a storage hormone. So when insulin is around, as in when you eat sugar, when you eat carbs, and you're eating fat, that's really where you get into trouble. And nearly, I would say almost all the processed foods we eat are combinations of fat, some, some kind of combination of fat and carbs. And it's especially problematic if you're go, trying to go vegan or trying to go vegetarian and you're trying to subsist on the packaged foods that you find in whole foods. And every year they do this, uh, twice a year actually, they do this thing called the Natural Foods Expo. Some of you may have heard of this, the Natural Foods Expo. They have it in Anaheim, they have it in Maryland. Started off by a guy, uh, a guy in Boulder, Boulder, Colorado, no surprise there. Uh, and uh, he, I think, started 25 years ago, 20, 25 years ago. Uh, and every year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I haven't been there in a long time, probably 10 years, because it was just too big. Because there's so many manufacturers of these kinds of processed foods, and they are not good for us for the most part. Now, there are supplements like meal replacement supplements and those kinds of things, protein supplements. Those are processed for sure. Uh, but because they're so nutrient dense, I don't, I don't consider, I'm not including those. I'm thinking more like the chips and the frozen foods and the microwavable foods and the snack things uh, and, and the uh, power bars and health bars and uh, these are not good foods. They're, for the most part, they're dense combinations of, of high-energy substances, calorie substances, uh, things, uh, protein, uh, mostly uh, carbohydrate and uh, fat with a little bit of protein, depending on what you're getting, of course. Um, the protein bars that are more protein. For the most part, these snacky-type substances and power bar-type substances and microwave and process generally fall under the category of processed foods are not good. And, and one of the main reasons they're not good is because they've got these weird combinations, Frankenstein-like, of molecules that are derived from fats and molecules that are derived from, from carbohydrates, and they're all kind of thrown together. And what they all have in common is they're very, 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 very high energy. And the body has got millions of years of biology vested in finding these kinds of foods because for millions of years, these foods were not available. And then about 100 years ago, they all of a sudden, a mere blip in the time in the uh, evolutionary life of the human body, we've got this incredible abundance of these kinds of foods. And it's wrecking our health absolutely wreaking havoc on our health. There is nothing that has been more deleterious, more harmful to human health than the advent of these kinds of foods. Maybe a case could be made for industrial toxins and chlorine in the water and drugs, but uh, for the most part, because of the vast amounts of the stuff that we're eating or ingesting or putting into our system, this is probably the single most, or at least one of the, the most important reasons why human health has declined so dramatically in terms of chronic long-term degenerative diseases over the last, beginning 10,000 years ago, but at such an accelerated pace over the last one to 200 years. We've gone from a situation where we don't have a lot of these foods to a nearly inexhaustible supply of it. Everywhere you go. Dozens of vending machines, 7-Elevens, pizza stands, taco stands, delis, not to mention supermarkets and restaurants. Per square mile, you've got dozens. If they did an average, it would come out to probably, I don't even know, a dozen per square mile, dozens per square mile. Sometimes you hear the word fats and lipids used synonymously, but technically speaking, when we're talking about fats, we're talking about one of the three main food groups along with uh, sugar, carbohydrates, and protein. Lipids enc encompasses cholesterol. Lipids encompasses phospholipids. So lipids is not exactly fats. Fats are mostly what we're eating. 
Technically, they're triglycerides. You got three fatty acids attached to a glycerin. You got three sizes of these triglycerides. You got short, medium, and long. We've talked about this a lot. I don't, you don't hear a lot of people talking about this idea, though, of the different sizes of fats and their different health relevance. It turns out that the short ones and the medium ones, medium ones are incredibly healthful and important. The short ones... Are just, you know, the medium ones are important for sure. The medium ones we've talked about, medium chain triglycerides, they call them. They're, they got appetite suppressant effects and they can be used for energy and they get really neat benefits, the MCTs. But the short chain fatty acids, ah, for my money, those are the absolute most fascinating. And they are, we're going to cover those. We're going to cover those a lot. They're like almost like hormones themselves. They're, they're just powerful, powerful chemicals, these short ones. If you ever read about apple cider vinegar and how important apple cider vinegar is, I know we talk about it in this program all the time, but if you ever you, you know, you get on the internet and you see all the miracle uses of apple cider vinegar, there's these books, 86 uses for apple cider vinegar, all the different ways apple cider vinegar can improve your health. Patricia Bragg talked about apple cider vinegar. Largely, it's because of the short chain fats in apple cider vinegar. There are other things in the fats for sure, but what gives the, uh, there's other things in the apple cider vinegar, but what gives the apple cider vinegar its wide ranging diverse health benefits are the short fats, specifically one short fat. And we're gonna talk about these short fats here. I know I talk about it periodically because they're just so fascinating to me and they're so important for health and so, so, so underappreciated. Just, I'll tell you this little thing, little tidbit here. The best way to make sure you have enough of these short fats is to eat fiber and take care of your, your gut because these short fats are made when bacteria in the gut eat fiber. They, they digest the fiber. They digest our fiber and they release these short chain fats. I'll tell you that. So eat fiber and make sure you're working on your microbiome. The medium fats are important for sure. The long ones are the ones I want to spend some time here with because the long ones are the ones that are, they're the ones most of us think about when we think about fats. The long ones come as unsaturated or saturated. Unsaturated triglycerides, long chain triglycerides are, are saturated. Saturated, can you think of as a, as a solid or maybe semi-solid, mushy? And the unsaturated ones are typically liquid. The body can make all of the fats it needs. It makes them from sugar. It converts sugar into fat. Sugar gets turned into fat. Some really interesting biochemistry, how that's done. So there's no really need, there's no need for fat. Your body can make fat with the exception of two fats. So all the fats in the body can be made. So you can, you're, you're not gonna, as long as you're eating carbohydrates anyway, you're not gonna suffer from fat deficiency. But there's two that can't be, those are the essential fatty acids omega-6 and omega-3, and these are unspeakably important. That's why they're called essential. Well, they're called essential because you can't live without them, but they're like vitamins in the sense that they are deficiency diseases show up when you don't have them, especially involving the skin, the nervous system, and the inflammatory system. When we don't have enough of, or we have the wrong balance of, and that's another very important point that we're gonna talk about, these essential fatty acids inflammatory issues, skin issues, and nervous system, including the brain, brain issues, inevitably result. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back with your phone calls right now. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, got lines open, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee, you can start your own business, be in business for yourself, earn thank you checks associated with spreading the word about how powerful and important a good nutritional supplement program can be. If nutritional supplementation has helped you or a loved one in your life and you want to pay it forward and have a little business while you're doing it, start a business while you're doing it, call 866-735-2470 for more info or click on the join the team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com. We've got a new uh, connective tissue supplement that should be out sometime this week. Our hyaluronic honey and uh, peppermint salicylic cleansers are out, and my blemish repair complex should be out. Uh, should be up. Uh, we ran out of it. It should be out for sale again. Up for sale again. I get a lot. Getting a lot of letters from you guys, wondering when that's coming back out. Hopefully, in the next mm, two weeks or so. Got a new toner coming out. Exfoliating toner. Got. Uh, we have a whole bunch of new products coming out. 
please keep checking back at truthtreatments.com if you're interested. And make sure you take a look at our truth treatments that are up there right now, including our biomimetic mineral mist made with folic minerals, plant-derived minerals, so important for plants and as it turns out, so important for human health, especially for skin health as well. All our truth treatment products are up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, we'll continue talking more about fat and the importance of fat, specifically the essential fatty acids tomorrow. I'm just, I discovered the power of the essential fatty acids when I started suggesting them for, for people who had skin issues. And I was, this was maybe 30 years ago, 35 years ago. We learned about essential fatty acids in pharmacy school, but nobody ever taught us how unbelievably powerfully, medicinally, and therapeutically valuable they are for all kinds of things, including and especially eczema, psoriasis, dry skin, all skin issues. There's no skin issue, skin health challenge that is not a cry for the body's essential fatty acids. Even if it's an autoimmune kind of condition like psoriasis, you'll still get benefits because of the very, 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 very important inflammatory and anti-inflammatory role these things play. Skin diseases are inflammatory diseases, as all diseases are. That alone tells you. If you understand that essential fatty acids are the key players in the inflammatory and anti-inflammatory process, and you know that all chronic degenerative diseases are inflammatory in nature, that's all you need to know. Now, it is a little more complicated than that because fats need to be absorbed and assimilated and taken into the blood. And that sometimes doesn't happen as well as it should, especially if you're having, if you have intestinal problems, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, or you have liver problems or gallbladder issues. So it's not as simple as just taking essential fatty acids. Nonetheless, for most people who have never taken an essential fatty acid supplement, when you get on an EFA supplement, you will notice dramatic, I mean, really profound changes in your health, especially for the skin, because that's so noticeable. Dry skin is the body's cry for essential fatty acids. Yes, there's other things that are important, for sure. But still, there's nothing more important than the EFAs when it comes to dry skin. How many people do we know that have, do you have, know that have dry skin? If I'm doing a presentation and I ask people, how many, people, how many uh, folks out here have dry skin? They invariably, the whole room will raise their hand. And the ones who aren't raising their hand are, are not being honest or they're just not raising their hand. Because everybody has dry skin. I find it so interesting and so ironic that we spend $100 million or more in this country on moisturizing products, and everybody has dry skin. You would think with all that darn moisturizer, you'd never see dry skin. Nobody would ever have a problem with dry skin. How can that be? It's because, well, two reasons. First of all, dry skin has nothing to do with a moisturizer, and a moisturizer has nothing to do with dry skin. Moisturizers do not moisturize, as we've said so many times. Moisturizers soften. Moisturizing is, is water. You're not going to get water in your skin by putting a cream or a lotion on it. So your dry skin is not, has nothing to do with moisturizing products. But the second reason why moisturizers and, and healing your dry skin do not go hand in hand is because moisturizers suppress your body's, your skin's ability to make its own moisture factors. Yes, the dumbest thing we can do to our dry skin is put a moisturizer on it because you will just ensure that you will permanently have dry skin. And that is probably the main reason why the more moisturizers we buy, the drier our skin is collectively and individually. On the other hand, by using your ultimate EFAs, by using essential fatty acids, by eating fatty foods for that matter, essential fatty acid rich foods, I should say, avocados, eggs, organ meats, by eating these kinds of foods, we can support our body's ability to make its own moisture factors, dry skin, dry scalp, dry feet, dry hands, whatever. Think EFAs. Oh, yeah. Probably vitamin A is also important. Zinc is also important. Protein is also important. There's lots of things that are important. But EFAs are key players when it comes to skin moisturization. All right. We'll do one story here and then we'll get your calls. 844-236-6010. Got lines open for you. Vitamin D for weight loss. Speaking of fats, vitamin D plays a major role in fat metabolism. Vitamin D plays a major role in fat burning. If you're lo- running low on vitamin D, you are going to increase your risk of weight gain. This is from the website verywellfit.com, by the way. Vitamin D is a natu- uh, vitamin D is a fat soluble, sometimes touted a fat soluble vitamin, sometimes touted as a natural weight loss aid when taken in a dietary form. Now, I don't necessarily know if it's, I'd go so far as to say you take a vitamin D pill and you lose weight. Nonetheless, vitamin D up 
upregulates things. It speeds things up. My favorite word in biochemistry, upregulation. It increases the production of, of fibers and proteins, and it helps cell, it turns cells on. Vitamin D is a, a turn cell on molecule, and it does it genetically. It's a hormone. It's not even a vitamin, really. It's a hormone. Call it a vitamin because it's so important, and you have to, have to get it from the outside, whether from the sun or whether from food. You can't make it. But it's, uh, it's uh, much, it has a lot in common with things like estrogen and cortisol. In fact, oh, by the way, vitamin D is basically cholesterol. Yeah, it's just a little tweaked version of cholesterol, as is estrogen, as is cortisol, as is testosterone. These are all just tweaked versions of cholesterol. This is why I've said so many times, cholesterol is a upregulating stress management, life management molecule. Not the, for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is the fact that vitamin D is cholesterol. So yes, of course, vitamin D will uh, uh, stimulate fat burning and low vitamin D levels will increase your risk of weight gain. Get out in the sun without a sunscreen. Yes, I said it. Get out in the sun without a sunscreen. Don't burn, but make sure you get out in the sun without a sunscreen. I know there's probably dermatologists that think that's heresy and blasphemy. How can you say that? I, had a, I did a talk, I remember, about, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, and I said, don't wear sunscreen, go out in the sun. And there was a lady from a sunscreen company who manufactured sunscreens, and I could see her in the back. She was going into convulsions. She, she couldn't hold, contain herself. And when I took questions, I, I took her first, and she ripped me. Oh, my God. Now, she didn't mention the fact that she runs a sunscreen manufacturing company, but she couldn't believe that I said, go out in the sun without your sunscreen. Well, I said it, and I'll say it again. Go out in the sun without your sunscreen. Don't burn. Do not burn. Never burn. Not a good thing to burn. And if you're going to burn, wear a sunblock, not a sunscreen. Zinc oxide, not a chemical sunscreen. All right, Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open. We'll return with your phone calls right after this. Four four two three six sixty ten is our number, and it's time to hit the phones. Let's go to our friend Carl, the Truth Raider. What's up, Carl? Thanks for holding. What's going on, man? Oh well, good morning. I hope you're keeping cool. Anyway, uh, talking about uh, a program, as I mentioned in previous shows, ironically named the Bright Side. Okay. It's like an, uh, a YouTube information site called the Bright Side. Okay. And they were talking. And they were talking about foods to never eat. Okay. And they brought, they brought in the subject about eggs. They said never eat eggs? Yeah, they're, they're, I, I, I would imagine you would strongly disagree with that. Well, let me hear their logic. Um, what was their logic? They were talking about something about arterial uh, disruption or blockage that the... Uh, the what, was it the, the cholesterol they, they were talking was, about? Someone about about something about cholesterol and then other things that that it uh, it, it causes uh, some type of a damage. Well, uh, so, you got to give me a little bit more to go on, but basically that's a bunch of hoey. Okay. I, I, there must be. I, I don't know. You know, it's, it's just a lot of these internet sites are just going by what are the what the general belief is in the mainstream. You know, if you listen to this program, I'm, this is not about the mainstream. Nothing we talk about here is mainstream. So, yeah, the mainstream position, that is the mainstream position. But the mainstream is also presided over the largest increase in chronic degenerative diseases in the history of mankind. The, mystery, the yeah. mainstream is, is respond, mainstream medicine, I don't want to say responsible, but they've, they've been associated. And, and as, as mainstream medicine took more of a hold on the cultural mindset, we got sicker and sicker. So it's not, I wouldn't be proud to be part of the mainstream. You should be questioning everything no. that's in the mainstream. Don't you think? Right. And that's not just true about hell. That's true about every, anything that's mainstream. Once, once information becomes mainstreamed, it's part of the institution. And the institution of medicine and the institution of government and the institution of law and all these institutions are there not for you and me. They're there for themselves. 
An institution wants to keep things the same. Institution comes from the word static, or it's derived from the word static. Instit, S-T-I-T, means to stay the same. So institutions right. are about things staying the same. So, you know, if, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. Do, are we happy getting what we're getting when it comes in terms of health? I don't think so. I'd be embarrassed to be part of the mainstream. I, if I was part of the mainstream, I'd be questioning everything. So if any, you read anything that's part of the mainstream, my doctor told me, you know, I hate those words. My doctor told me, if you're anything that's part of the mainstream, you know, you should be questioning it. Always question the mainstream. When I was in the 60s, I grew up in the 70s, you know, late 60s, 70s. Uh, they said, question authority. Always question authority. You know, you know what? You, the the fam most famous uh, promoter of this idea of questioning authority was a guy named Socrates. And you know what happened to him? He, he actually went to the youth. He told the youth to question authority. And Socrates ended up getting killed for, for uh, corrupting the youth, they said. Did you know ever hear that story, <laughs> Carl, the truth Raider? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was thinking about that. They made that. him drink the hemlock for corrupting the youth, for questioning authority. Well, question authority. Maybe not too loudly. <laughs> Maybe you want to be quiet about questioning authority. Do it in your head. Question everything that's mainstream, yeah. in my humble opinion. That's why I do this show, is to you know, yeah, wake people right. up to the idea that if it's mainstream, it's probably not in our interest. Right. If everybody's well, doing one thing, you want to be asking why, and, and do you really want to be doing that? That's just a general rule of thumb, general rule of life, in my opinion. All right, I want to get one more call in, Carl, the Truth Raider. Anything else? Well, no, it's just the site is, it, it, I agree with everything they said, except they're, they're saying the studies are saying that their eggs are controversial and they have some benefits, There's, but they also have some terrible problems that, that can arise from just eating one egg per day can increase, you know, some health, health issues. Really? Did they say yeah. mention anything about the vitamin A and the vitamin D and the vitamin K yeah. and the and the essential fatty acids and the lecithin and the phospholipids and the hyaluronic acid? Did they mention anything about any of those stuff? And the zinc and the B vitamins well, and the enzymes? Did they mention any of that stuff? But they said there's good benefits in eggs, but then there's some problems where it, it, it can cause right. some problems. Blah, blah, blah. I know. I've heard, the, I've heard all that. All right, Carl, yeah. the truth raider. Eat your eggs, in my opinion. Don't overcook them, though. You know, you don't want to. You don't want to scramble them. You want to poach your eggs or soft boil your eggs. Yeah, you don't okay. overcook them. That's where you can run into some problems. You know, cholesterol is not a problem when you eat it, but 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 processed cholesterol, heated cholesterol, that can be problematic. Oxy cholesterol, they call it, and that can that can be a problem for sure. So you don't want to overcook your eggs. All right, Carl, have a good day, man. Good to talk to you. Let's go to uh, BC. Canadia. What's up, Cl uh, Clayton? What's up, Clayton? How you doing? Hey, good. Hey, Ben. I just wanted to talk about the sun a little bit. I know that you uh, are a big proponent of uh, getting out in the sun. And, and Yes. Uh, yeah, so with the UV, uh, about 20 or 30 years ago, I used to play a lot of golf, and uh, all the old guys used to check the UV before they went out to make sure they had their sunscreen on. And okay. in my area, which is uh, southern uh, Canada near the Washington state border, used to be around five or six in the summertime. Now, five or six, meaning what's that like 80 on the or UV something? Scale, on the UV. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. In the UV scale, five or six out of what? I don't even know what that I've never heard I of. I think the it UV goes scale. up to 10, 10 or I've 11. never even heard of that. So, what do you need? There's different UV rays. You're talking about all the UV rays collectively, it's, or a yeah, it's the UVB and UVA together, and you get the UV, UV index. I don't, I, maybe they don't have it in the States, but they have it. I hadn't heard that. I, I think I've heard of the UV index vaguely, yeah. but okay, so I'll have to look up. I'll have to look that one up. Uh, so, so go ahead. Now, in this area, it's regularly 8, 9, or 10 in the summertime. And according to some of the reports that I've read, it's, uh, the UVA is supposed to be about 95% of the UV that we get, and UVB is about 5%. Okay. But uh, when you do a search on uh, YouTube now, you can see guys that have these UV meters that are reporting at least 20% UVB huh. now. You have what, and of, also, to, hang on, hang on, Clayton. Say that again. They're reporting 20% of what? Uh, UVB. So in other words, it used to be 5%. Now it's 20%? Yep. Now it's 20%. So we're getting a lot more UVB. Right. Interesting. I did not know that. As now, and does that also, have anything to do? What does that have to do with like the ozone layer? No, I don't think I, so. I would think so, maybe. Huh. But the most alarming thing is that they're reporting UVC. Yeah, that's alarming. Which, I had heard that UVC is increasing. UVC is the that's the really dangerous one. Is right. the UVC? 
Uh, that's, that's very interesting information. Uh, UVA, UVB, and UVC are the three main ultraviolet rays that affect us. UVC used to not be a problem. I mean, it was a problem in the sense that it was the most potent, but the ozone layer blocked that. UVB is right. the burning ray, and it's also the ray you get the vitamin D from. So I wonder if that means we're going to get more vitamin D. I got to look into that, though, Clayton. I hadn't heard that. And UVA is, interestingly, is the, uh, that's the aging ray. That's the ray that affects the collagen and the connective tissue. It goes down the, the deepest into the dermis. And it has the most, uh, has the most um, uh, aid, pro-aging effects. And most sunscreens block UVB. They don't block UVA. Although newer ones, are now they're conscious about UVA. So now they're, they're putting things in that block UVA. Problem is the, the chemicals that block UVA are the most deadly of all the sunscreens. And you can only use those in small amounts, tiny, tiny amounts. The UVB blockers are toxic, but a little less toxic. Uh, but zinc oxide is the way to go for sure. Look for zinc oxide. Titanium dioxide is second. And then uh, that's pretty much all anybody should use, in my opinion. Zinc oxide and titanium, titanium dioxide. Thanks for bringing that up, though. I, di I didn't realize that about the uh, UVB and UVA and UVC. That's definitely troubling. What's the best sunscreen, Clayton? The best uh, sun protection, I should say. The best sun protection? Uh, yeah. I would say clothes or staying out of the sun, I guess. Uh -huh. I good, good. Clothes, probably. Nutrition is the best sun protection. Make sure you're doing your nutrients. Make sure you're doing your fat-soluble nutrients. Make sure you're getting your vitamin C. Make sure you're getting your pigments from vegetables. Iodine, Shortcut, that anything one? that helps your eyes, from the, uh, protects your eyes from the sun will protect your skin. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I said iodine, is that a good one? Iodine is always good, not necessarily specifically for the sun, but iodine is, is a definitely a good essential nutrient that we don't get enough of. But no, that's not necessarily going to be a sun one. But uh, uh, phytonutrients are the, probably the most important, the plant nutrients, the yellows and the reds and the greens. They get deposited in your skin and they'll protect you from the sun. Another neat uh, sun, protective, uh, sun protection supplement that you could take is N-acetylcysteine, NAC, which we've talked about a lot in the past for a lot of things. Great. NAC is not an essential nutrient, but it's an awesome nutrient, and it does have sun protection properties, and it will protect your skin from the sun, and it will also protect your eyes from the sun, and you'll see NAC in a lot of eye nutrients for that reason. It's NAC. I love NAC, and I've loved it for many, many years, and I've taken lots of it for many, many years every day. I take probably two, probably a gram or so every day. Uh, of N-acetylcysteine. Anything else, buddy? No, that was it. All right. I think I hear the music. Yep, I hear the music. That's it. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Our website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for all our truth skin health products. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Thank you.